Welcome back to episode 10 of A Very Welsh Park. Hang on, something doesn't feel right. <clears throat> Welcome back to episode 10 of A Very Welsh Park. Much better. Although you might be able to hear that I still don't sound quite right. Yes, despite my superhuman immune system, I've somehow succumbed to the pathetic common cold. Hmm, whilst my register is this low, let me try something. I am Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Amusing. Anyway, there's no time for tomfoolery, as we approach the end of this series, we've got a park to finish. The next ride to grace us with its presence is the humble Ferris wheel. Nothing fancy required here, just some simple fencing. By the way, if me mentioning the end of this series has made water come out of your eyes, don't worry, I'm here for you. After some minor adjustments to the entrance and exit, I laid some ground cover in the form of TMTK stone. Don't freak out about the bit of overlapping path, I fix it shortly. Gosh, you're an absolute wreck today. If after this series you simply don't know what to do with yourself, I recently added a handy list of playlist links in the Discord, so you can go back and binge as much of my content as you like. Yes, that does involve you joining the Discord, and I know what you're thinking, ugh, another server for me to shove into a folder and forget about. Yes, that's exactly what it is, so now we're both at peace with it, you may as well just join. If you're already in the server, just send a message in chat, I miss you. Look at the efforts I go to to avoid any Zed fighting, quite noble if you ask me. Because I'm clearly an idiot, I tried placing some benches down on a path I could no longer see, which took way longer than the video shows. Is this a trim I see? Shock horror! A trim using beams. Nobody saw that coming. For the name of this big wheel, I wanted something groundbreaking, unique, never done before, and I think you'll agree I succeeded. Watching this back now, I probably should have named it Olwen Vauer, the Welsh translation, but, you know, hindsight and all that. Oh look, I'm adding some path cover which covers that overlapping bit of other path cover. Told you not to worry. Much like Worthington Farms, we couldn't make a British park without a pub. This will also double as a restaurant, a gastro pub if you will. It'll come as no surprise that I constructed our pub using TMTK plaster like the other 80% of the park. I played around with the terrain a little because I was feeling jovial. To allow our pub to function, I added a restaurant facility and as many expansions as I could squeeze in.
the architecture for our build closely matches that of our dark ride facade for, all together now, cohesion. Haha, <laughs> trims. I created a custom open door. Gosh, the effort is outstanding. In case you skipped the last episode like an absolute nutcase, we built a dark ride themed to the BFG. In the 1989 BFG film, there's a quick shot of a pub called the Swan, and thus our pub has a name. I quickly threw together a pub sign and popped it onto a couple of TV screens to act as a traditional swing sign. For the bracket, I used hydro beams and an iron hanger. I chucked some windows on the wall making extra sure that they're definitely windows and I'm definitely putting them on the wall. The usual fire exit but this one adapted to extend out from the building a smidge. If Shaun of the Dead taught me anything, every pub has a cellar. So I constructed what I now know is called a beer drop. Gosh, so educational. I used metal tread plates, a colourable panel, and hydro beams. A couple of kegs and a sack barrow clutter this area up nicely. I gave our pub a roof using, you guessed it, plaster walls. I added the usual AC units, but then decided to construct a very unique unit. What is it? No, I, I'm, I'm asking you, what is it? Because I have no idea. It looks important, that's for sure. Ready for another technical term? Patras plate. That's what this is, and I'm making it using an iron column and iron lamppost. Hey Moomin, I thought this build was brand new. How come it's dirty already? You know what? Shut your face. Next, we make an absolutely stunning little stable conversion. <clears throat> Sorry, not sure what happened there. Yes, to house a few small facilities, I created a quaint wooden structure. Those facilities are an ATM, a couple of vending machines, and one of those creepy fortune teller machines. Although, let's be honest, they're only creepy because of the film Big. <sighs> Young people, it's a film from the 80s. Uh, Tom Hanks, he wishes he's big. 
and then he gets big, but technically he's still a child, but then he still goes ahead and falls in love with a grown woman, very strange. Anyway, he gets his wish granted by a fortune teller machine that turns out it was never plugged in. Ooh, spoopy. This one is definitely plugged in, I think. To ensure our units even have the possibility of being wired in, I added some electrics. Moving on to what I'm sure a lot of you would describe as the main event, the coaster. I went with a custom Gerslauer Infinity and started with the station. It might come as a shock to most of you, but I built this coaster all by myself. I did send this over to the Coaster Pro himself, Nerd Chacho, for the seal of approval though. Matching many of the other builds in the park, the main structure was built out of natural wood plank walls. I then added the same trims as always. I wrapped the stairs and then proceeded to do trims, because that's what I do apparently. The same fence as seen over at Big Bite, Goliath and elsewhere ties everything together wonderfully. Over on the rear of the station, I left an enormous hole in the wall. I won't tell you what's going in there yet because it's based on something else I haven't even built yet. Figure that one out. More of the same trims. Some say lazy, I say cohesive. As you may have noticed, our transfer tracks are trapped inside the building. Our terrified little train cars need access to the outside world, so I built a massive shutter. I created this using beams, a locomotive rail, basic shapes and equipment trolleys. What a lunatic!
a few bits of detail in the form of electrics and signage. After a few more trims, as I always do, I covered the station platform, this time using wooden scaffolding planks. I lined the edge with wooden pillars and stuck down the usual hazard strips for safety. Using haunted house pillars, I created a simple custom fence so that silly people don't fall off the edge. I concreted the brake run and transfer tracks using terrain paint. To avoid a boxy build, I raised the height of part of the station. Back inside, I started on a control booth for our ride up using wooden balcony pieces. This will be very similar to the one over at Red Dragon. Have you seen episode 8 or are you truly unhinged enough to watch a series out of order? I added the usual details such as electrical cabinets, cable racks, fire extinguishers, a CCTV monitor, and even a cute little coffee mug on the windowsill. How adorable! Using my huge brain, I remembered to do the rafters before putting the roof on this time. Genius. That roof is corrugated iron, but I'm pretty sure you saw that coming. I couldn't cope with my previous organisation, so I went back and added additional beams with a roof in the way. Onto the queue, I went simple with a custom corrugated iron fence and stone ground cover. For this awkward gap at the front, I turned it into a kind of flower bed for trees? Oh, I don't know, it's early. Feel free to tell me what it is in the comments if you so wish. Next I added some lockers before filling a gap with what I do know is called a planter.
I copied the same Q post design from Hoatzin and Falcon, and even stole the ride sign whilst I was at it. Which brings me to the name of this monster of a coaster. In Welsh mythology, there was a loyal and majestic griffin-like creature that obeys any order given by its owner. This did subsequently lead to said owner being ripped to shreds due to a tiny miscommunication, but regardless, what is this powerful creature called? Ah, here we go. Adachluth Gwyn. Well, it wouldn't be a Welsh park without at least one name nobody can pronounce. Moving forward, let's just call it Adar or ALG. Back inside, I added some simple trussing and lighting before we lose sight of it. A few hanging lanterns are all that's needed for the station itself. Next was the rather large task of fencing off the ride area. I do save you from the majority of this, but I thought I'd share the section that doubles as ride evacuation from BFG. Our coaster has some wonderful path interactions, so to make the most of that I decided to create a sheltered seating area right under one of the main coaster elements. I created the structure using chain link fencing, beams and pillars. Oh, by the way, a few of you keep asking for aerial views of the park. I'm not ignoring you, you will get them at the end so you know where everything is. Also, don't forget to tune into episode 12 where me and a couple of special guests will be doing a full park tour. Oh look, a flange. I imagine a few of you are trembling in your tiny seats because I haven't talked about what zone we're in yet. Orange. We're in the orange zone now. We all love flying through things at high speed, so I built a simple shack type structure. I used beams, a stone wall base, planks and pillars. After mercilessly killing some grass, I added some foliage. For the rest of the ride area, I added various trees, bushes, and subtle terrain variations. A 
I even added a water feature. Crikey. This is a roof. Look, I'm tired and ill, leave me alone. So you remember that enormous hole in the side of our station? Well, why don't we take the plank wall design from here and add it over there too? What a great idea, viewer. And there we have it, a Ferris wheel, flat ride, and a coaster all in one tiny episode. Quite overwhelming. I'll catch you next week where we go backstage crazy. See you then.